I'm gonna tell a story, so listen, K. Thanks. It's about the book Hill of the Fall of Reach by Eric Nyland. Contact all team standby. Enemy contact. My position. The chief knew there were probably more than a hundred of them. Motion sensors were off the scale. He wanted to see them for himself, though his training made that lesson clear. Machines break. I don't. The four Spartans that composed Blue Team covered his back, standing absolutely silent and immobile in their Mjolnir combat armor. Someone at once commented that they looked like Greek war gods in the armor. But his Spartans were far more effective and ruthless than Homer's gods had ever been. He snaked the fiber optic probe up and over the three-meter high stone ridge. When it was in place, the chief linked it to his helmet's heads-up display. On the other side he saw a valley with eroded rock walls and a river meandering through it. And camped along the banks as far he could see were grunts. The Covenant shoot these stocky aliens as cannon fodder. They stood a meter tall and wore armored environment suits that replicated the atmosphere of their frozen home world. They reminded the chief of white dogs, not only in appearance, but because of their speech, even with a new translation software, was an odd combination of high-pitched squeaks, guttural barks, and growls. Page 2. They were about as smart as dogs, too. But what they lacked in brain power, they made up. For in sheer tenacity, he had seen them hurl themselves at their enemies until the ground was piled high with their corpses. And their opponents had depleted their ammunition. These grunts were unusually well-armed needlers, plasma pistols, and there were four stationary plasma cannons. Those could be a problem. One other problem, there were easily a thousand of them. This operation had to go off without a hitch. Blue Team's mission was to draw out the Covenant rear guard and let Red Team slip through, in the confusion. Red Team would then plant a HAVOK tactical nuke. When the next Covenant ship landed, it dropped its shields and started to unload its troops, they'd get a 30 megaton. Surprise! The chief detached the optics and took a step back from the rock wall. He passed the tactical information along to his team over a secure comm channel. Four of us, Blue Two, whispered over the link. And a thousand of them? Pissed for odds for the little guys. Blue Two, the chief said, I want you up with those jackhammer launchers. Take out the cannons and soften up the rest of them. Blue Three and Five, you follow me up, we're on crowd control. Blue Four, you get the welcome mat ready. Understood? Four blue lights winked on his heads, up display as his team acknowledged the orders. On my mark. The chief crouched and readied himself. Mark. Blue two leaped gracefully atop the ridge, three meters straight up. There was no sound as the half ton of Mjolnir armor and Spartan landed on the limestone. She hefted one launcher and ran along the ridge. She was the fastest Spartan on the chief's team. He was confident that those grunts wouldn't be able to track her for the three seconds she'd be exposed. In quick succession, Blue 2 emptied both of the Jack Hummer's tubes, dropped one launcher, page 3, and then fired the other rockets just as fast. The shells streaked into the grunt formation and detonated it. One of the stationary guns flipped over, engulfed by the blast, and the gunner was flung to the ground. She ditched the launcher, jumped down, rolled once, and was back on her feet, running at top speed to the fallback point. The chief, Blue 3, and Blue 5 leaped to the top of the ridge. The chief switched to infrared to cut through the clouds of dust and propellant exhaust just in time to see the second salvo of Jack Hummer strike their targets. Two consecutive blossoms of flash, fire, and thunder decimated the front ranks of the grunt guards, and most importantly, turned the last of the plasma cannons into smoldering wreckage. The chief and the others opened fire with their MA-5D assault rifles, a full automatic spray of 15 rounds per second. Armor-piercing bullets tore into the aliens, breaching their environment suits and sparking the methane tanks they carried. Gouts of flame, traced wild arcs as the wounded grunts ran, in confusion and pain. Finally the grunts, realized what was happening, and where this attack coming from. They were grouped and charged in mess. An earthquake vibration, coursed through the ground and shook the porous stone beneath the chief's boots. The three Spartans, exhausted their eight peak clips and then, in unison, switched to shredder rounds. They fired into the tide of creatures as they surged forward. Line after line of them dropped. Scores more trampled their fallen comrades. Explosive needles bounced off the chief's armor, detonating as they hit the ground. He saw a flash of a plasma bolt, sidestepped, and heard the air crackle where he had stood a split second before. Inbound Covenant air support, Blue 4, reported over the comm link. ETA is two minutes, chief. Roger that, he said. Blue 3 and 5, maintain fire for five seconds, then fall back. Mark. Page 4. Their status lights winked once, acknowledging his order. The grunts were three meters from the wall. 
The chief tossed two grenades. He blew three and blew five, stepped backward off the ridge, landed, spun, and ran. Two dull thumps reverberated through the ground. The squeals and barks of the incoming grunts, however, drowned out the noise of the exploding grenades. The chief and his team sprinted up the half-kilometer sandstone slope in 32 seconds flat. The hill ended abruptly, a sheer drop of 200 meters straight into the ocean. Blue Ford's voice crackled over the comm channel welcome mat is laid out, chief, ready when you are. The grunts looked like a living carpet of steel blue skin, claws, and chrome weapons. Some ran on all fours up the slope. They barked and howled, being for the Spartans' blood. Roll out the carpet, the chief told Blue Four. The hill exploded, plumes of pulverized sandstone and fire and smoke hurtled skyward. The Spartans had buried a spiderweb pattern of Lotus anti tank mines earlier that morning. Sand and bits of metal pinned off of the chief's helmet. The chief and his team opened fire again, picking off the remaining grunts that were still alive and struggling to stand. His motion detector flashed a warning. There were incoming projectiles high at 2 o'clock, velocities at over 100 kilometers per hour. Five Covenant Banshee flyers appeared over the ridge. New contacts. All teams opened fire. He arced. The Spartans, without hesitation, fired on the alien flyers. All of this, pinned from the flyers' shitless armor, it would take a very lucky shot to take out the anti pods on the end of the craft's stubby meter long wings. The fire got the aliens' attention, however. Lances of fire slashed from the Banshee's gun ports. The chief doesn't roll to his feet. The end of the first chapter of this movie.